if the internet is just a way to pass data from point A to point B, then why is it so complicated? And why are there so many different technologies? After all, playing football is simply just getting the ball from point A to point B. Then how can that be so complicated? Well, when you get into the trenches, you'll see that the passing of data actually goes through seven steps. And we call these the OSI model, which stands for Open System Interconnection Model. And it is the most widely used method for talking about network communications. Hi, my name is Walt. Welcome to Linode series, where we take complex topics and simplify them for you. Be sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified of educational content like this. When it comes to data, sometimes it's text, as in an email or a password string, or an image, as a captcha, or an audio recording, as a podcast, or a video like this one here on YouTube. But it's all still just sending data from point A to point B. For example, from me to you. Actually, in this case, I sent my data to YouTube and then you're retrieving that stored data. So let's talk about that. To visualize this flow of data, there's this OSI model chart. It describes the seven layers that data passes while it's going from point A to point B. An easy way that I memorize the order is with the sentence, please do not tell secret passwords anyone. So the seven layers are physical, data link, network, transport, session, presentation, and then application. You can see that the data from point A travels through software, cables, and hardware before it reaches the destination at point B. And you can say that, that these layers are broken into three different sections. You have the hardware section, then you have like the heart of like the middle section, and then you have the software section at the end. So let's talk about that. So let's start with the hardware layers. So the first layer is the physical layer. This layer specifies how a device sends and receives information, such as fiber optic cables uh, or coax cables or just hubs. For the second layer, you have the data link. And this layer takes the network information and breaks it down into frames and transmits them over the physical layer. So some examples are like ethernet and switches. The third layer is called the network layer. This layer organizes the data for transfer and reassembly. So it finds the best available path from one network to another to ensure that the data is delivered. And some examples are packets like IP, ICMP, and IGMP. So let's take coax cables from the physical layer. I've got a bunch of cables here. They are used as the, as the transmission line for radio frequency, video, and data signals. So for example, they connect radio transmitters and receivers with antennas, internet connections, and cable TV signals. Then you have what I, I was saying is the heart of the OSI model. And this is the fourth layer. It's the transport layer. This does end-to-end -end connections like TCP and UDP. UDP stands for User Datagram Protocol, and it's a communication protocol that's used across the internet to transmit time-sensitive data. It's fast because it doesn't wait for a handshake by the receiving party. A handshake is sort of an agreement where both sides say, hey, it's okay, let's send over that data. So it's fast for things like voice over internet protocol, which is also known as VoIP. Now, Let's talk about the software layers. So this starts at layer five, which is your session layer. This layer communicates the request and response. So a session could begin with a need for authentication. Then the other end would receive that request. And some examples here are APIs and sockets. So now we're onto the sixth layer. This is called the presentation layer, and it's the translation layer. The presentation layer delivers and formats information to the application layer so that it can be displayed. Some examples here would be like SSH, FTP, JPEGs, and GIFs. And number seven, we finally have the last layer, which is the application layer. This is the end user. So right now, that's you. Some examples are HTTP and SSH. With HTTP, this is the URL in the web browser. It stands for Hypertext Transfer Protocol. So it transmits things like HTML and was specifically designed for communication between web browsers and web servers. So all of these synonyms are just protocol technologies that help pass data along the way, either to make it more secure or faster or easier or through different mediums like these cables or software applications. So now you can see how data flows between these layers. So let's recap. 
Number one, the Open System Interconnection Model, also known as the OSI model, is the most widely used method for talking about network communications. Number two, PDN-TSPA, or an easier way to memorize the OSI model's order of data flow, is the sentence, please do not tell secret passwords anyone. It stands for the seven layers, physical, data link, network, transport, session, presentation, and application. And number three, all you're ever really doing on the internet is just passing data from point A to point B. It's a simple concept. FTP or HTTP are just protocol technologies that help make the passing of data either more secure, faster, easier to do, or in different ways throughout hardware and software. So now you understand the flow of data, some of the network and protocols within each step, and some common examples for each layer. So hopefully I've helped you understand and see how this data moves from point A to point B. So be sure to subscribe for more videos like this, and we'll see you next week.